do some example in the, uh, during that lecture and I think so that is sufficient. So we are here now. We are here on the del operator. We are going to start on del operator, the gradient of a scalar, divergence of a vector, divergence theorem, curve of a vector and Stokes theorem. I don't anticipate that we will cover this today because of the material that we have uh, captured for last week. And I suspect that uh, whatever we not cover for this lecture, we will do it, uh, we will finish it on Friday. Just Friday becomes like part lecture, part tutorial. And that means that we are due for cut one. So for those who are joining the cut uh, at this stage, we are advised to be aware that uh, the time is uh, really catching up with us. So yeah. With, uh, I, I think I will give you, I'll start with, with an assignment, which I have been promising over and over again. I have been waiting for members to join the, the classroom. They have not, uh, so that's why I have a bit delayed. Once I start giving the, the assignment, they will come in huge numbers. So keep on revising, doing the examples that, that, we, that we have on the text and they are going to finish. So we are on, we are here now. So. I think that is the introduction regarding that. And for those who need a break, I'll go to give you two minutes break. Uh, we start on uh, the DER operator. And the DER operator, which is written as, as, uh, as this symbol, for those who are seeing it for the, for the first time, you just draw as an inverted triangle. It is an, a, a term that you get used to. And it's called DER operator. It, it is the vector differential operator. And in Cartesian coordinates, is defined as given in equation 316. And for those who like seeing someone write, you just say that del is equals to d or partial derivative of, of uh, something you put here uh, along the ax unit vector d dy you put something here uh, along ay plus d dz you're going to differentiate something there and along az so that is how we do it so what you're seeing is that along here, we always put a, a, a scalar and uh, that becomes the del operator. So we might have del operator being a gradient of a, of a scalar, a scalar k, or being a dot of a, of a vector a. So that is how we are going to do, we are not going to, okay, that, that's the possible applications you might see for del operator, it might be a gradient it might help you to define the uh, divergence of a vector or even another term you're going to find the cross of a vector and uh, we, are good, we are going to see its application in these three possible uh, scenarios so more the most important thing to know is how you express the del operator in uh, the cartesian coordinates the spherical coordinates and the spherical coordinates so that is our task for now. And that serves as an introduction. All right. So we are saying now that the vector, this vector differential operator, otherwise known as the gradient operator, is not a vector in itself. Rather, when they operate on a scalar function, for example, a vector ensues, or you make a vector, or you get a vector when you get when you perform a gradient of a scalar. Okay. And therefore, there are some useful, the operator is useful in the following scenarios. Eh? Just like I have mentioned, you can have a gradient of a scalar, you can have divergence of a, of a vector, you can have a uh, curl of a vector, and you can have the Laplacian of, an, of, uh, of a scalar. 
and this you're going to see them uh, as we carry on. So that is the four possible applications of uh, of the gradient of the data operator. It is very useful. So don't get surprised that you have this term. Uh, so yeah. So each of these will be defined in detail in subsequent sections. Before we do that, it is appropriate to find the expressions of the data operator in the two other coordinate systems, that is the spherical and what? And the cylindrical. So this can be done by the transformation formula that we, did, we derived in section two and 2.3 and 2.4, which we met earlier. I don't want to go back there. I just now want to tell to show you that we are not going to derive because deriving is a bit lengthy. But what I will say is just some ways that can assist you to remember. Okay. First of all, you need to remember how the dimension that we use for representing physical uh, coordinate system. We always use rho, uh, phi, and z. So whenever you find those, you know that it is symmetrical. And you can always remember that we expressed uh, uh, x in terms of symmetrical coordinates as this and that. And you can also express the, the Cartesian coordinates in terms of the symmetrical as that and that for phi. You know, we know we remember that z is always z when the, it is transitioning from the symmetrical to, to the Cartesian. Having said that, I will not deliver you to, uh, to, to derive this one because they are a bit technical, it may take long. At this point, I will mention that there's a video I shared on Google Classroom that illustrates uh, how, uh, what relationship arises so that it can give us the definition of the operator in the cylindrical. Again, I will not go through that because it is done in that with small video. All you need to know uh, and remember is that you express you express the data operator in the cylindrical coordinates as follows. This is quite straightforward because we say that uh, AX can uh, using the duality or the, the concept of uh, comparison, you can say that uh, AX will replace A rho in the symmetrical, and rho replaces X, a phi replaces uh, Y, and Z replaces Z. Of course, A phi becomes, or AY that was here becomes, what I'm trying to do is this, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that you have defined this one here. So if you want to get your, this is in Cartesian, so if you wanted to get the del in the cylindrical, all you have to know is that x becomes law. And therefore, anywhere we have x, we put law. And anywhere we have y, you put phi. So I can simply write this one as d d raw, a raw plus d d phi a phi plus d d z a z. The only thing that is all I am saying that you will need to remember that you introduce that is not represented in this equation is that you do one over all. So one over all is a, a change that comes when you are doing that uh, representation of del in the Cartesian in the cylindrical coordinate system, and that is this row that I was mentioning here. Sorry, I was mentioning that you, it, it follows the same idea except that you introduce this row right there. I don't want to go through the derivation; it's a bit lengthy. Is a video I've shared on uh, Go Classroom that you can refer to. And even that video does not derive, it only shows the significance of that. But I am only saying that you need to remember that when you are doing the data operator, you introduce the raw, the reciprocal of raw here. And yeah. So having said that, we now jump to the spherical, the representation of data operator in the spherical coordinate system. 
And we remember that the, for those who are new in the class, I know there are many of you who have joined today, there are many who have joined before. We represent the spherical coordinate system using R, theta, and pi. And these are somehow you can do some of the transformations. And we are not going to do this derivation again. All I'm going to say is that it follows the same idea because now if you if you can remember the the split recall, we had one over row that we introduced. So this one over row is now replaced by one over R, and therefore that duality follows. The only new item that we introduce with the spherical that was not there in cylindrical or in Cartesian is this term. Okay, so we're introducing that term, one over R sine theta in the A pi term. So once you, you, you get that, it becomes rather straightforward. And as a matter of fact, uh, even this text has not done the derivation, it actually directed you to this text here. Yeah? If you want to understand further how that derivation is done, for a derivation for del, for, for, der, for the divergence, for the car, for the gradient, and for the Laplacian, you can use something called Cabrinha coordinates, which you do in mathematics. Ours is not, not a mathematical unit. So we are just uh, getting the truth that we require. Therefore, you can do that using the text here. I don't know why you hit that one. Uh, but for me, uh, it's not necessarily very, very important that you understand to derive. For now, you just need to do uh, to understand how we present each of these terms uh, using different coordinate systems. So that serves as the uh, sufficient introduction to the del operator. We have defined it in Cartesian. We have defined it in cylindrical, and we have also defined it in in spherical. So those are important that you get to simply try to memorize them. Sometimes I might, uh, you might end up getting them uh, in, in, in uh, provided for in case there's an written exam. So, but it is always important to understand how each of those is uh, comes about. So having introduced the concept of the del operator, we are now ready to use the del operator to define the gradient of a scalar. Again, I don't want to rush you people, I want to move in, a, in, in bits. So if there is any question or concern, I can always respond in a minute. So we want to talk about the gradient of a scalar. And uh, we are saying that the gradient of a scalar or scalar field at any point is the maximum rate of change of the field at that point. So uh, we have a scalar field. We have a scalar field uh, that we define by us by V. And we have the gradient that is in Cartesian coordinates we are asking ourselves the maximum rate of change of the V. You know, my scalar might look like that. This might be a scalar field. So we are asking ourselves the maximum rate of change, where there is the maximum change, which it might be at this point, uh, the maximum gradient. That gives, that is the one that is defined by, by the gradient of a scalar, okay? So remember that uh, you, you can have a scalar field that might take any shape, and therefore when it takes any shape, hmm, assume that is your scalar field, the maximum change, hmm, you know, this might be along the x, y coordinate system, this is x, this is y, or rather, this is Z, this is X, and this is Y. So in that case, the maximum change might be that along the Z. Then towards when you are moving towards X, 
the maximum change is going to be defined by dx, and the maximum change along the y, along this direction becomes, so that combination is the one that we define as the gradient of a scalar. We're calling it a scalar field. All right, and uh, we want to say that a mathematical expression for the gradient can be obtained by evaluating the difference in the field dv between point p1 and p2 of figure 3.13. So here is figure point 3.13. I've just shown you one example of a field, and now we have points. So this is a 3D. Now we have a 3D scalar field. This might be a map. Remember, we, we did deal with 3D, with 3D dimension. And of course, the XYZ is a 3D dimension. Assume this is a map of a place, and these lines are showing you the latitude, uh, the what? Not latitude, but the altitudes. Altitudes. So this might be the peak of a hill, and then this is showing you where the, this altitude is the same. Hmm? This is the same altitude. Might, we might be saying about 500 meters above sea level. No, you might have forgotten those things. So this might be a graph that is showing that. So if someone might ask you, find the gradient of this Kira field from point P1 to point P uh, to point P. So that is what the gradient is going to give you. How the scalar field changes uh, from one point to another in terms of how much change or rate of change has changed. Okay, so we say that the gradient of a scalar field V is a vector that represents both the magnitude and the direction of maximum space rate of increase of V. So remember that this will give you the uh, both the dimension, both, both the magnitude and the direction of the maximum space rate of increase of V. So how much do we increase towards the Z direction? How much do we increase towards the y direction? And how much do, I, do we increase towards the x direction? And you see that the mathematical expression can be obtained by evaluating the difference in the dv between point P1 and P2 of figure 3.3, .3, where V1, V2, and V3 are contours on which V is constant. Okay. So I have just given you an illustration of a 3D map, geographical map of a point or of an area where one point is a peak of a, of a hill and then we are going down the hill and therefore the rate of uh, change is the one that is defined by the gradient and therefore you are saying that dv is going to be given by uh, how much change are we having towards the x direction towards the y direction and towards the v direction so having said that, because we are not going to do much of a derivation, we are simply going to say that the gradient, we are not going to dwell over much of a driving those things. We are simply going to say that the gradient of a scalar field V, sorry, and the gradient of a scalar field V is going to be given by the, the change along the x direction and you give the, the direction of the unit vector in y direction and the unit vector uh, or the z component v z component uh, along the z component uh, the, the z uh, direction and therefore this is how you define the gradient of v uh, the field uh, in the Cartesian coordinate system. And uh, in the Sredenko coordinate system, remember Sredenko is always uh, having rho, phi, and z. Again, you only introduce the one that, that I told you we introduced. This is how I was saying that we had defined the del operator. And therefore, now we are saying the del working on a v gives you the gradient and therefore if you are only introducing v at that point and the the del remains as it was defined earlier so if you know how to define the the air 
the then you can always be able to, to uh, demonstrate the gradient uh, or in the different coordinate system. That is the Cartesian, uh, the cylindrical, and the spherical. So again, the only time you are introducing in the spherical is the V. Everything else remains as we say in, uh, in, in the data operator. So there are some important formulas that uh, you might uh, get interested in, particularly when you are dealing with the gradient. If you have one scalar and, and another scalar, you can find the gradient of the sum of them by working, finding the gradient of each and then adding them. Or you can add them together and uh, get the gradient of both of them, which will still give the same result. Similarly, if you have the product of two scalars, you can be, first of all, either multiply them and get the gradient, or this is this follows the product rule of uh, if you do remember your your calculus, the product rule says that our product rule when you are doing the dif the differentiation, it normally says that uh, you multiply v du plus u dv, and it follows the same with the del or the gradient. And this is the quotient rule. If you remember your uh, differentiations that you apply when you are using the normal uh, partial derivatives or the normal derivations, the normal differentiations rather. So these are important that you should uh, somehow try to remember. Let me show you how to make it uh, in. Uh, when you're dealing with now the particular mathematical expressions of those, and we are taking the the, four, the notes of the following fundamental properties of the gradient of a scalar that the magnitude of gradient equals the maximum rate of change in v per unit distance, and the gradient points in the direction of maximum rate of change of v. So we are saying that uh, the gradient always points the direction of maximum rate of change of v and also the magnitude of gradient equals the maximum rate of change in per unit distance oh and i think that is clear so if you had this hill that we were describing using uh, where is that hill if this is a hill if this is a hill that is represented by those fields and I can draw that here. We can simply say that the direction will always point towards that direction. If you are, that will be the direction. And this has three components, both X, Y, and Z. And if you, that will be the direction that is defined by the gradient. And the maximum rate of change will be defined by the, the, the point where there is maximum rate of change. If the, the, the highest change, Look, okay, assume I can draw it slightly differently. Sometimes I have to keep on drawing. If some we have a, a relatively increase, then we have a sharp increase, and then my heel goes like that. This sharp increase is going to give you the maximum rate of change, maximum rate of change of in V, and that will be the magnitude of our gradient. So that explains. Uh, sufficiently the concept of uh, gradient. And there's some example here, which can actually look at it. And the example says that uh, if you are given this, this scalar field, and you are told to find the gradient, how do you do that? It is very straightforward. The first thing to identify is to is which coordinate system is used to represent uh, this uh, scalar field. And as you can see, we can see X and Y here, and Z uh, in this term. And therefore, because those three terms express the dimension of Cartesian coordinate system, all you need to do is to do it in the form of a gradient of V will become D, DX of V of V, along the AX direction plus D, D, Y of V along the EY direction 
plus d dz of v along the ez direction. Uh, okay, I'm of course responding to, sometimes it's important I respond to, I have responded to that question. So this is how you do it. And now, for those who might get trouble with this, you need, you simply need to, there's someone who was interrupting me there, but I have, switched off this video. Um, so we are simply taking the partial derivative of V with respect to X. And if this is now my V, if I were to take the partial derivative of this with respect to X, I would simply get EX remains there and cos y remains there, but then the, the derivative of sine x is simply two, of course, when you, when you differentiate uh, sine d sine two x, with respect to x, this gives you two cos two x. So this two is the one that comes here, and the cos two x remains there, and we still keep our ax there. And of course, uh, you do the others like similarly, and that becomes quite easy. If you are to do differentiate, uh, now you with you have the first thing is to, to identify which coordinate system that your variable or your scalar field is in. And as you can see, you you has two uh, these parameters phi, rho and z so you can actually see that u is in the cylindrical coordinate system so you are going to use the del operator of the uh, cylindrical coordinate system and you know that the only thing we are introducing is the u everything else remains as we defined for del operator so once you have that then you are going to be differentiating u with respect to rho so when you respect this differentiate this term with respect to rho you're going to find d squared d rho is simply going to become two, two rho. So you are going to find that this two rho comes there and everything else remains the same. Okay, so I think uh, that marks uh, that concept. And I can see someone is telling me that uh, time is up. I thought I would, I would extend a little bit, but we can actually stop there.